Hello, everybody. Good morning. Happy New Year. Um, I am gearing up to burn a Highland cow today. Um, and if you guys are new to me, my name is Jannie Lizenby. I am the artist behind Red Roof Barn. I am the founder of BurnSavvy.com and I am the pyro professor over at Burn Savvy Academy. So feel free to go join me over there. Um, but I wanna get to this cow because this is something that I've been wanting to burn for a long time. We tend to give away our time and our energy and everything, even if it is for you know an income in the holidays during November, December. And so at the beginning of the year, it's really important, I think, to do a project for yourself. So you can see I have a general sketch right now, and this one was just a freehand sketch. So you've got my mama cow and my baby cow. And what I am using is my Colba detailer. I'm gonna switch out the nibs. You use this little thing called the easy nib puller. They're basically like tweezers. And you just attach it on there and pull. So what I'm gonna start with <clears throat> is this rounded shader. And this is the replaceable nibs. They have fixed tip nibs too. Both are really good. Tie your hair back, tie your jewelry back, tie your clothes back, your headphones if they're wired. <clears throat> so I'm gonna use this and we're gonna go ahead and just start burning for the fun of burning. So typically with like an eye, I'm gonna go ahead and start with this eye. I like to burn in kind of those darker spots first. So I try to burn in some of those darker areas first. And I'm using a mix of techniques here. So when I'm going back and forth like that, that's the pulling stroke. When I'm doing these circly things, that's called the scumbling stroke. And get a darker area in here. So I'm on a little more definition right there. <clears throat> Any eyes that I've studied, and I love eyes, there's almost always a ring around the iris. A nice dark ring, so I try to make sure I get that in there. I'll probably add some more details on these eyelashes. I have some eyelashes going that direction, but usually the cow's eyelashes go back this other way. So I'm gonna burn some dark spots here. And then usually that eye is a little bit lighter than the parts around it. So I'm going to just burn very lightly some fur in here around the eye. And typically the fur around the eye goes like every direction. <laughs> it's kind of funny. And as I teach in my shading course, I'm adding texture and then I'll be adding some shadows to it. Because there's a difference between texture and shading. Um, Although texture can definitely be used for shading. Shading is mostly just where the light falls. Texture is of course where things have a little bit of something to it. They're not just flat, right? And I will add more details to that a little bit later. Now there are a bunch of different ways to do hair. And hair is, hair is a real tricky, tricky one. Like it, it wants to go everywhere, right? <laughs> and it wants to be all, all over the place. And if you draw it just wrong, it looks like spaghetti noodles, right? So it's, it's kind of tricky and it takes a, a lot of practice. Now, as you can see, I'm, I'm kind of outlining, but I'm mostly putting on edges. Uh, this is something I really preach in my, um, in my Savvy Pyrography shading course, you don't really see stark lines unless it's like something that's not natural, like a, a billboard, you know, you'll see some unnatural lines on the lettering or whatever. But if you're looking at a tree, if you're looking at a hand, if you're looking at a building, there's very ra rarely a really harsh line. And one of the things that I like to do with hair is to burn darker on the shadow side and lighter on the non-shadow side. Just kind of a general rule of thumb for drawing or shading or, you know, any art in general. Okay, let's see here. Add a few more little wispies. Oops, that one got a little darker than I wanted it to. 
one for yourself is so, so rewarding. <laughs> I do love doing commissions and I love burning things for other people, doing portraits and, and um, other things. But when you burn a project that you just want to do, that has very much its own reward. And I love it. It feels really good. The Highland cows tend to have a different texture around the rest of their face than they do with this long hair. So I will have a slightly different approach to the hair around the rest of their face. Um, that's another thing though, if you're just starting out, do not burn quickly. Don't, don't try to rush it because really if you can master the techniques while you're going a little bit slower, it will improve your burns so much that you will naturally start to go faster. Okay, you want light pressure right? Like we just talked about, you don't push it. You can't muscle a burn. Light pressure, low heat. So instead of burning really hot and having to move really fast, slow down, give yourself a little grace there. You don't have to turn your hand. Um, sometimes because of this cord, turning your hand can get kind of cumbersome. It can make the wire go where you don't want it to go. And so in the end, I find it a lot easier to just turn my wood. Okay, so that's kind of blocked in nicely. I'm gonna do a little bit more around here and then I'm gonna start adding some depth to this particular spot. And this is what I mean by working in your mistakes. Like that was darker than I wanted it to be, but since cows are natural creatures, you're going to have natural inconsistencies. And so by allowing those natural things to be in there, it actually looks a little more realistic in some ways. If I were doing a portrait, nap, nah, I'd, I'd probably have to see if I could work it in. And I'm actually gonna turn my nib upside down. This is one of the reasons though that I love the shading nib is that it is so, so versatile. If you're not sure what nibs you need to get, I'm going to say for sure get one of these. And for those of you who may be wondering, I'm actually not going to be going for um, perfect, photorealism. If I were doing photorealism, I would have to work probably slower and things. I like my work to have a little bit more of an edgy feel to it. I can do the, the <laughs> realistic. My husband keeps telling me I should just do it. I should just do it. But I like to do the edgier stuff. I think it's, it's fun. You can see how I am turning all of my little outlines into edges, right? So again, I'm not outlining. I create a little edge and then I add detail. And then if you have to add a layer or two, it's not bad, but you don't have to add eight layers in one spot because that's frustrating. And to me, that just gives me more carpal tunnel and I don't like it. I don't have carpal tunnel, but my wrist does suffer <laughs> if I'm not careful. I, uh, I actually do stretches and exercises and stuff. I think that's starting to, I think that's starting to pop. What do you guys think? Yeah, it's starting to come alive. Okay, I'm gonna add in a few more shadows. I think the hair needs to come out further. So I'm gonna make just a little more hair there. So I'm gonna go back in with those strokes I told you about, the touch stroke and the um, sweeping. Did I tell you about the sweeping? The sweeping is like dark on one side and fades to the lighter. I'm fighting that grain of wood again. Not what grain of wood, I'm fighting the wood grain again. Uh, if you guys, by the way, are looking to upgrade your machine, the coal wood is a really great machine. I have never had a problem with this machine going out on me with the heat. If it does go out, like that's a fluke and you can talk to the manufacturer about that because it's it's awesome. This machine is, <laughs> it puts out a lot of heat and it puts up with a lot of use. It's just a really, really great tool. I highly recommend it. And if you guys wanna go get one in the description, I've got links to um, all of my tools in there. You guys will see all of those links in the description. And if you use my code, SAVVY, then you will also get 5% off.
I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside and I will continue to work on it on the next Bearwood Live. And that is going to be happening on January 20th. So that's two weeks from today. Today is Thursday the 6th and the next one will be on the 20th. And if you want to get my tool, head over to bearwoods.com forward slash pyro and you can see all of their pyrography goods. Guys, they've got some good stuff. Um, go use code SAVVY, S-A-V-V-Y, and get yourself a discount on all that goodness. Uh, if you guys want to, you can follow me on YouTube. I'll be posting that video about techniques. And then, of course, guys, I'm so excited about the retreat. If you guys want to hear more about the retreat, the details are coming soon. Go sign up on burnsavvy.com for my uh, email list. And you will be getting the details on that. So far, the only detail I'm releasing is that it will be hosted in Arizona. That's that's my home state. This is where I'm at. So I'm super excited and it's happening in the fall. So keep your fall calendars open. Go get yourself a tool. Go and enjoy yourself. Start burning. Wood burning is so rewarding. It's so much fun. And I love watching the wood just like melt under my fingertips. Mm, so much fun. All right. Later, Pyro. Have a great day.